I will now present to you the solution for problem F, Mentos. This is a problem of combinatorial enumeration, where you should count trees with two parameters, n and a. n is the size of the tree, that is, the number of nodes of the tree. We want to count trees that are unary binary, which means that each node has zero, one, or two children. These trees should be unranked, which means that when some node does have two children, you could exchange these children and the trees that they are the roots of, and still the resulting large tree will be unchanged. Finally, all trees should be labeled, each node having a label from 1 to n, and each integer from 1 to n being the label of one unique node of the tree. Finally, we do have two constraints. The first one is that when you go from a branch, from the root to a leaf, then uh, the sequence of labels you see is increasing. And the second constraint is that the node with label A is a leaf of the tree. So now, if T and A is the number of trees we want to count, we will count this modulo K, which will avoid us the pain of dealing with large numbers. It turns out that when A is equal to N, the numbers T, N we have are all of the exact numbers. So they are well known because they do have a name. And they are the coefficients of the exponential generating function of tangent pi over 4 plus x over 2. So now let's count these numbers. And first, we will need to compute binomial coefficients by using, for instance, such simple recursive formulas in time n squared for all the binomial coefficients together. Then we can also compute the numbers T, N in time n squared for all the tn's at once by the means of a recursive formula. Imagine you want to count trees with n nodes and n is at least 2. Then so the root will have label 1 and otherwise you should just choose the number l of nodes that will go in the left subtree and then there will be n minus 1 minus l nodes in the right subtree. You should choose those l among n minus 1 ways to pick labels that will go in the left subtree, and then you have TL ways of reassembling these labels to form a tree, and TN minus 1 minus L ways of reassembling the remaining labels into the right subtree. Finally, you divide the number you got by 2 because you could swap left and right subtrees, and so the large tree you were looking at was counted twice. In the same direction, we can compute the numbers T and A. Here, without loss of generality, if a is at least 2, it goes in the left subtree. Then, saying that we have l minus 1 nodes that are smaller than a in that left subtree, and k nodes that are larger than a in that left subtree, we will have to choose l minus 1 among a minus 2 possibilities for those l minus 1 nodes, and k among n minus 1 a possibilities for the k nodes larger than a. We will have to reassemble all these nodes in the left subtree with the constraint that the node A, which after relabeling becomes the node L, is a leaf. While the right subtree does not have such constraint of node blah is a leaf. And that's where this formula comes from. Unfortunately, it's too slow and leads to an N4 computation. So let's go faster as follows. Imagine you have a tree with N nodes in which A might not be a leaf. Then if there are K strict descendants of A in the tree, just chop them. You have k among n minus a ways to choose the labels of those nodes you chopped. And once they are chopped, you get a tree with n minus k nodes in which a is a leaf. Finally, once you had decided which labels you had chopped, you had t k plus 1 ways to reassemble them into a tree where branches bear increasing sequences of labels. That's where this formula comes from, and that's why it can be used to compute very fast the numbers t and a.